Mr. Redfish. See the difference between the red drum and the black drum. Got a dot on his tail, a little blue tint to his tail. That tells me that the water's a little cold, because if your fanny was in this water, it'd be blue too. Welcome to Sportsman's Adventure. We're gonna do something really different and really cool. Now my Yamaha and my 21 foot Hughes, it got me here. But all over this great state that we fish in every day, we've got no motor zones. And today, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna fish a no motor zone. I use my boat to drive over here. And whether you're in the Ding Darling Wildlife Refuge uh, in Port Charlotte, or you're in Mesquite Lagoon or the Banana River, or even down at Flamingo and some of those no motor zones, the whole key is it's going to be sponsored and powered by Armstrong. Armstrong Outboards is what's going to be doing the work today. These things right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to teach you about the winter time fishing and what these fish do. They have to pile off the flats because you have cold fronts that just came through. As you can see with this beautiful blue sky, not a cloud in the sky, cold fronts come through. It's in the low 50s. It's not blowing too bad. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to teach you a lot of what happens to where these fish fall off of the flats and they fall in these deeper water channels. All over the state, we've got this same scenario, so stay tuned, it's really gonna be cool. Snook, redfish, trout, black drum. Boy, it's a pretty day. If I can get up here, caught a few fish here in the creek. Now if we can get up down here where these bays dump in, I think you're gonna have lots of water, warm water. If you notice, what I'm doing is I'm lifting the rod tip and dropping it. <clears throat> and then when we get the bite, we get some reel down and set the hook. The reason that you lift is because it lifts the shrimp off the bottom, it drifts down a little bit, and then you drop it, it stops there for a minute. So you're constantly fishing new places. You ever see a fish do the backstroke? This one's swimming on the back, doing the backstroke. Look at it. He's hooked in the bottom of his jaw doing the backstroke. <laughs> Big backstroke. Huh? He's talking to me. Fin. Looks like a slick dorsal fin. Black drum, red drum, they're bottom feeders. When the water's cold, the warmest part of the water early in the morning is down on the bottom. So you gotta understand that. Once the day heats up, then yeah, you might be able to throw top water. But most likely these fish are gonna move out of this canal when the water heats up into these bays that we're gonna possibly get our way get to. Mr. Redfish. See the difference between the red drum and the black drum. Got a dot on his tail, 
little blue tint to his tail that tells me that the water's a little cold because if your fanny was in this water, it'd be blue too. Actually, we call these a troll right, the old timers do. And what it allows the shrimp to do is swim in a natural motion. I'll show you how we do it. The shrimp is alive, I kept them on ice. Take the shrimp out, see his legs. Gonna hook him right up underneath, through his mouth, and out the top of the shell, just like that. And what this does is it allows him to swim in a natural motion. All right. Now, one of the things I like doing is throwing up current and bouncing it back down the current. The throw up there. I got braided line, 10 pound braided line, and I'm just gonna hold the rod tip up and I wanna feel that jig bouncing on the bottom. And when it stops, all I'm doing is lightly reeling the slack. See, you can see my rod tip bang banging right there. There's a fish right there. Now the bad thing about fishing out of a canoe is you hook a big fish and you go pull the canoe all over the place. Now, the question is, black drum, redfish, the key is you gotta be on the bottom. The water's cold, you gotta fish slow. If you don't, you won't get the bite. There he is, senior black drum. Now let's see if he'll talk to us this morning. Nope, he ain't got nothing to say. Look how he got beautiful. Cousin of the redfish. See him, no dot on his tail. But he see him, he's kindly waving to you. Hey, good morning all you viewers there. Sportsman's Adventures. Stay tuned after this commercial break. His tail is really, really blue. The reason why, he is just a little cooler than his body temperature. Sportsman's Adventures is brought to you by Florida, the fishing capital of the world. Yamaha, when you want the best. Rapala, your best shot at a world record. Rapala Line, premium fishing line crafted from experience. Maverick, fish the legend. Minn Kota, anywhere, anytime. Hummingbird, simply, clearly, better. Florida is the fishing capital of the world, hosting more than three million anglers per year. To maintain healthy fish populations, anglers are responsible for fishing legally. That means you must measure fish regulated by total length from the forward point of the head to the farthest tip while pinching the tail. Fork length fish are measured to the rear center edge or V of the tail. Visit myfwc.com for more information. Yamaha Four Strokes, reliable performance. A turn of the key, a touch of the throttle, and you know what to expect. Power, performance, and handling that are undeniably Yamaha. With a four-stroke lineup that ranges from 2.5 horsepower all the way up to an ocean-conquering 250 horses. Everyone is clean, quiet, fuel-efficient, feature-packed, and marine-inspired. Yamaha Four Strokes, just turn the key and go. Yamaha, reliability starts here. You know, I fish all over the world in over 300 days a year on the water. And as a matter of fact, I spend more time on the water than on dry land. If it swims in salt water, I catch it. Out here, where the fish are big and mean, your lures really take a beating. To survive, they must be tougher than the fish you are. Back country to blue water, my choice in lures is simple. All over the world, big fish eat little fish that swim like a rapala. It takes a little more to make it out here. It's about guts, standing up to the elements, and quietly doing the job when others have long gone home. It takes riptide, 
the toughest, most corrosion-resistant trolling motor ever built. When your reputation's on the line, hang it on Riptide, only from Minn Kota. I've been fishing all my life and seen some pretty cool things on the water. I've seen 180-pound tarpon jump in my boat. I've seen giant snook slam live bait, and I've also seen super shallow redfish I can easily pull to. I've seen a lot, and a lot has changed except my boat builder, Maverick Boat Company. Make no mistake about it, Maverick makes the best technical polling skiffs, high-speed backcountry skiffs, and bay boats in the world. Hughes, Maverick, or Pathfinder, number one for a reason. Just right there underneath the boat. Stealthiness. Oh yeah, black girl. Now let me tell you a little bit about the tackle I'm using. It's a 3 8 troll right, 3 8 ounce. Okay, it's got a 4 0 hook in it. Stainless steel hook so that I can use it more than once. I've got 10 pound and braided line here. Now there's a million types of braided line. There's, we don't even need to get into all the different brands. But the thing is that when you put the braided line on the spool of a spinning reel, the one thing that you need to know is you don't have to fill it all the way up. The reason why is because it's so small in diameter, it's gonna cast further anyway. But the other thing is that you don't want it to come off and get in a little twisted mess because when you get a twisted mess and braided line, cut it and retie. Now, because I am using braided line and potential of a big snook bite, I'm using a 40 pound Invisi line, which is a suffix um, type of uh, fluorocarbon. And I think fluorocarbon in this dirty water doesn't seem to matter, but the reason why I like the fluorocarbon is because it's very abrasion resistant, specifically that Invisi line. I use it for my tarpon leaders, snook leaders. And really, that's all it is. You gotta find where the fish are living, throw the shrimp up current, bang, 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 bounce the bottom. We call it B&B &B fishing, bouncing the bottom. Not to be mistaken for bouncing her bottom. That's BHB. And if you do that, you get in trouble. So make sure that uh, when you're B&B &B fishing, bouncing the bottom, that you're able to feel the bottom. Now, I got all my stuff. Let's talk about all the things that I brought. I brought a little leader bag. You don't need a lot of stuff. A cooler with some water, some chicken in there, my favorite food. I got my life jacket, a paddle, a push pole, because I also like to pole canoe. And then I've got a variety of jigs, not a lot. One little tray and then some soft plastics in case I run out of shrimp. So there you go. You don't need a lot of stuff. Keep the canoe light and it won't tip over. As soon as you get all that weight, all that weight in there, that's when you get in trouble. People get to moving around, whether it's bad cameramen or whether it's uh, you do it yourself. You hook a big fish, he pulls you all over the creek. You gotta be ready and keep the canoe light. That way you don't have a lot of weight bouncing around. Let's see if we can catch another one for you here. Oh, there he is. Now, you know, we're here in the wintertime, and the one thing that makes this really work well is that when the water gets cold, the variety of fish change. When the water's warm, you might catch tarpon, you might catch more snook, catch a lot of black drum. As the water cools, the black drum continue to bite, the snook will slow down, the tarpon Definitely, when the water gets below 70, you probably won't catch him. And if the wind is out of the north, I'm, I promise you, you won't catch him. And then the redfish start to pick up. So that's the one thing you gotta remember. One day you might go there trying to target snook, and guess what? The water temperature's too cold, and you might only catch black drum. You might only catch redfish. But when the water warms up, then you might catch a big trout, the snook, and also the tarpon. He's telling me, you're absolutely right there, Captain Rick. Most days, I wouldn't even put my hand in the water when it's really cold. So you just gotta be able to adjust, that's the key. Is being able to adjust to whatever is going on. Because this time of year, here we are in January, when people are freezing their tushes off 
other parts of the country. We're out here wearing just a little bit more than a long sleeve t-shirt. And we're catching fish, we're not shoveling snow. That's the whole key. Remember to keep your rod tip up and that lifts the jig off the bottom and lets it kind of bounce along. And eventually what will happen is it'll stop. Lift, lift. And let me tell you, I use this same method in lots of places. Government cuts one of them. Fishing up there with Mike Holiday in Jupiter. There's a nice redfish. <clears throat> Any places where you got high volume of current, you gotta be able to one, feel the bottom, and number two, lift your jig and then lay it back down on the bottom. Lift it, lay it down on the bottom. Because you gotta remember, there's not gonna be a shrimp swimming in six feet of water three feet off the bottom. They live in the bottom. That's what you gotta remember. Make yourself as an angler constantly, even when you're catching fish, think, try different things. And you'll learn a lot more about the fish that you're fishing for. Now I want you to notice this fish's tail is really, really blue. I'll show it to you here. His tail is really, really blue. The reason why, he is just a little cooler. Maybe his body temperature is a little cooler than some of the other fish that we've caught. We'll keep constant, watch that. Constantly, I'm gonna be watching that because it's gonna let me know without having a temperature gauge on the boat what's really going on with the water temperature. Is it getting cooler or is it warming up? If that blue has a tendency to fall out of his tail, then I would have a tendency to think that the water's warming up. So again, gonna throw it up current, let it sink. Sometimes you don't wanna close the bail immediately. Let it sink. Watch your line on the water, and when it stops making little notches in the water, then you know you're on the bottom. Lift, lift, drop, lift and what I'm constantly doing is fishing new places started up there now I'm fishing straight right here keep lifting keep reeling your slack I might have lost my shrimp nope this crab still biting it so now what I'm gonna do is now that I've gotten past pulling it down current now I'm gonna open the bale back up and let a little line out lift it now i'm lifting it off the current's having a tendency now to sweep it up that's the whole key to fishing lots of current drop it back down and the same thing applies guys ladies even if you're in 90 feet of water in the bahamas jigging or you're off of key largo jigging 90 feet of water 120 feet of water you're gonna lift your jig and then drop it back down. Open the bale. Make sure that you drop it back down. The reason why you gotta open the bale, let a little more line out, is because the current is scoping your line and lifting your jig up off the bottom. I have a feeling I lost my shrimp. Yep, I did. See that? Oh, look at this redfish. They tow, look at them towing that canoe around. This Conservation Minute is brought to you by the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. Light tackle fishing is great, but if you're going to release that fish, make sure you use heavy enough tackle in order to land that fish quickly. That way this fish will recover quickly and will have a much greater chance for survival. After you catch a fish, try to leave the fish in the water and use your pliers or a de-hooking device to remove the hook. Don't hurt the fish by sticking your pliers down the fish's throat or gills. If the fish is hooked deep, just cut the line as close to the hook as possible and let the fish go. If you do have to take the fish out of the water, pick him up, hold him horizontally so that you won't damage his internal organs. 
revive a tired fish by holding him in the water horizontally, moving him forward with his mouth open, which will allow the water to flow over his gills. Artificial lures with barbless hooks can prevent gut hooking the fish. If you use live bait, be sure to use a non-offset barbless circle hook. Try to take care of your fish, keep him in the water, and let him go as soon as possible. Contender Boats, take it to the limit. Wherever you find fishing tournament winners, you'll find Contender Boat owners. First to the fishing grounds, first to the winner's circle. When you look for strength, versatility, and ocean ability, you find Contender Boats, hand built, one by one, each and every one. Contender Boats is proud to introduce its new 23 Tournament Edition, the latest in true mid-sized offshore fishing rigs. Contender is committed to providing outstanding quality and performance. Nothing else delivers. Expect the most, Contender Boats. Yamaha's Big Block V6 Four Strokes. Everything you want when you're miles offshore. Everything and more. Up to 250 ocean conquering horses. More than enough top end muscle to move the big boats. Yamaha Turn the Key Reliability translates to confident starts. Quiet, clean burning performance. Smooth, powerful acceleration and cruise all day fuel efficiency. Yamaha, reliability starts here. Every second on the water is critical. So to get to the fish fast, I rely on Humminbird. Humminbird's exclusive side imaging sonar shows me picture-like images of bait fish, schools, channel drop-offs, wrecks, and other structures. Navigation is easy and accurate with Humminbird's advanced 16-channel GPS and optional Navionics Platinum charts. Finding fish or finding my way, Humminbird is simply, clearly better. Wouldn't it be great if you could snap on a lure and just go fishing? With something that looks like, and more importantly, swims like the real thing. With lures that come pre-rigged with the best components available. With baits designed by people who fish all over the world. But most importantly, you tie these on your line, you're going to catch some fish. Hey, Roland, what gives you total boat control? The power pole. And Shaw, what gives you the edge on wary fish? There's no other tool quite like a power pole. The power pole stops your boat when you want and where you want in up to eight feet of water without spooking the fish. Hey, Brian and Greg, how have you guys won so many redfish tournaments? Without a power pole, it'd be hard to do. And Captain Rick, what gives you total boat control in winning all of your tournaments? For total boat control, get the power pole. I've been fishing all my life and seen some pretty cool things on the water. I've seen a 180 pound tarpon jump in my boat. I've seen giant snook slam live bait. And I've also seen super shallow redfish I can easily pull to. I've seen a lot and a lot has changed except my boat builder, Maverick Boat Company. Make no mistake about it, Maverick makes the best technical polling skiffs, high speed backcountry skiffs and bay boats in the world. Hughes, Maverick or Pathfinder, number one for a reason. good. It is all good. Look at that head shaking, banging and banging and banging. It must be a redfish. Thump, thump, thump. That's what it's all about. Now, as you can see by the bubbles, look how fast the current now is starting to move. We got here right at the tide change. So we've got acres and acres of warm water up here or cooler water depending on what time of the day you're in and it's all falling down into this little creek oh there he is there's one tailing right there oh there he is oh this is when it gets fun Big redfish. This is where it gets fun. I better get get down on the seat. We got the push pole under one arm. Oh, look at this redfish. They tow. Look at him towing the canoe around. 
<laughs> hey, dog. Wow. <laughs> Towing the canoe. He was tailing. It was so cool to see him tailing. Come on, pull me around. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> wow. They're up here, just like we said. They're gonna be up here because of the sun warming up the water. Hey, that zoo shrimp. Pretty good. Look right. Ah, 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 ah. Don't hurt me. There we go. There's a nice red fish for you. Up on the flats, getting warm. Let me get this out of your butt. Well, thanks for watching this week's Sportsman's Adventures. And I want to tell you, we want to dedicate this show to those of you who don't have a boat. Now, all over this great state of Florida, there's no motor zones that you can go fish. So you know that you can go and catch redfish and drum just like I did on this week's Sportsman's Adventures. Check out the Sportsman's Adventures website at www.sportsmansadventures.com. Coming up next week on Sportsman's Adventures with Captain Rick Murphy. I knew I was going to get one top water pretty soon. Watch that anchor. Uh-oh, he's coming in. He's going in to kick the boat around. Kick the boat around. Kick the boat around. He's going in on me. I got a kick. Go to him, Murphy. I got a kick.